Hi, I'm Marisa Stahl. I'm one of the pediatric gastroenterologists at the Colorado Center for Celiac Disease, and I'm with Dr. Ed Liu here, uh, the medical director of the Colorado Center for Celiac Disease. And we're gonna talk today about celiac disease screening in patients with Down syndrome. Celiac disease is an autoimmune disease triggered by gluten. We know that as gluten is digested in the small intestine, it causes an autoimmune response that leads to characteristic villous blunting. This occurs in genetically predisposed individuals, specifically with HLA DQ2 and DQ8. We can screen for celiac disease by looking for autoantibodies, specifically tissue transglutaminase IgA and anti-endomesial antibody IgA, um, and deamidated gliadin peptide IgG in individuals that are IgA deficient. The only current available treatment for celiac disease is a strict gluten-free diet. Celiac disease is one of the most common autoimmune diseases affecting one to 3% of the population worldwide. However, most living with celiac disease remain undiagnosed. This is known as the celiac iceberg. This slide here is from an epidemiologic study based out of Denver in children known to be at genetic risk for type 1 diabetes and celiac disease, in which you can see even more, 3.1% of children develop celiac disease by 10 years of age. Interestingly, while we know that celiac disease is an autoimmune disease that you can develop at any time in your life, the incidence of celiac disease in this at-risk population plateaued after 10 years old. Most children are screened for celiac disease because of classic malabsorptive gastrointestinal symptoms, including diarrhea, failure to thrive, abdominal distension, and pain. However, Many people can also have more non-classic symptoms, ranging from neurologic symptoms like brain fog and headaches to dermatologic symptoms such as eczema or dermatitis herpetiformis. These non-specific symptoms can make celiac disease harder to diagnose. To complicate the diagnosis further, even in the general population, over half of individuals may be completely asymptomatic at the time of diagnosis. So who should be screened for celiac disease? Those with recognized symptoms are most commonly screened. The USPSTF released a statement in 2017 stating that there is insufficient evidence to recommend screening for asymptomatic individuals. However, several GI societies recommend the screening of asymptomatic individuals based on being in a high-risk group. This is known as targeted screening. The increased risk in individuals with other autoimmune diseases, like type 1 diabetes and thyroid disease, and individuals with a family history, is thought to be due to overlapping HLA risks. The mechanism of increased risk in Down syndrome and other genetic syndromes is less clear. So now we're going to talk about a paper that was published in the Journal of Pediatric Gastroenterology, Hepatology, and Nutrition titled Routine Screening for Celiac Disease in Children with Down Syndrome Improves Case Finding. And this was a collaborative effort with the Colorado Center for Celiac Disease and the C Center for Down Syndrome. So what's known so far? Children with Down Syndrome have an increased risk for celiac disease, and symptoms can be subtle and oftentimes go unrecognized. And because these children have a decreased verbal communication ability or potential language impairment, it can make it very difficult to assess pain. The American Academy of Pediatrics only recommends screening in kids with Down syndrome if symptoms are present. Therefore, routine screening for celiac disease is not typically performed. So the study aims were to determine the prevalence of celiac disease in our population of kids seen in the C-Center, and also to compare the features of children with celiac disease identified either clinically or only as a result of routine screening. Now, doing a chart review of this, we found that celiac disease was seen in 10% of all patients. And the most common symptoms were constipation and diarrhea, followed by abdominal pain. But this was just in common in those without celiac disease. And overall, only 18% were diagnosed with celiac disease due to having symptoms, meaning 82% were diagnosed with celiac disease only because they were screened. And out of those that were screened, half of them had symptoms that were unrecognized, and half had no symptoms at all. So what's new from this study? 
Well, first thing is we learned that we can't rely just on symptoms to detect celiac disease in children with Down syndrome. This is a very challenging population to simply monitor based on symptoms. And without routine screening for celiac disease, 82% of all cases would have been missed. There was also an average of a three-year delay between the onset of symptoms and celiac disease diagnosis. Therefore, we think that routine screening of celiac disease really should be recommended for all children with Down syndrome. So what are the gaps in knowledge? We don't know what it means to have asymptomatic celiac disease. And for screening, risks to health have to be balanced against the impact on the quality of life with respect to a gluten-free diet. We still don't know why people with Down syndrome have an increased risk of getting celiac disease. And due to difficulties with diagnosis and treatment in Down syndrome, new diagnostic and therapeutic strategies are desperately needed in this patient population. The Colorado Center for Celiac Disease is collaborating with the Linda Cernick Institute Human Trisome Project to try to better understand why children with Down syndrome are at higher risk of celiac disease. The Human Trisome Project is a multifaceted biobank that will allow us to look at multiomics in those um, with Down syndrome who develop celiac disease and compare them to those who do not have celiac disease. It is hoped that knowledge gleaned from this will help to develop new diagnostic and therapeutic strategies for celiac disease in those with Down syndrome and that this can also have applications to the general population. So thank you for joining us today as we talked about screening for celiac disease, especially in kids with Down syndrome. We're currently recruiting patients with Down syndrome for our study. For more information, please visit www.trisome.org.